y'all, Laura Richardson here with Relevate. We are Real Estate Elevated. We're actually coming at you with another episode of I'm Moving to North Carolina, Now What? This is our HVAC edition, and I'm here with the owner and operator of American Comfort, Travis Bennett. Travis, thank you for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Well, give us a little bit of backstory about you, your experience in the industry, and why this was the area of your expertise. Um, well, when I was 18, um, I didn't really want to go to college, so <laughs> I know that's probably a crazy answer, but so I decided to get into heat and air because my grandpa told me, you know, if you don't go to college, find a trade, mm -hmm. and that's what I did, and I got into heat and air, and um, I found I enjoyed it. Well, at first I actually hated the grunt work, but as I started learning more, mm -hmm. it became more enjoyable, and then to see, you know, how happy people are when they get cool, you know, that's pretty pretty um, neat you know something we need here in North Carolina for sure yeah it gets if you're not hot. from North Carolina it gets a little hot <laughs> a little yeah, hot we're does, getting into yeah. this and humid the I'm heated sorry. days here yeah. so fast forward you've now got 22 years experience did I hit that right yeah 22 years okay. experience um that tells my age a lot but yeah so you started when you were 12 uh, yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> so 22 years experience um and over the years you know just decided um, I really wanted to get into it for myself and got my contractor's license and then started my own business and then from there um, just continue to keep helping people um, with their air conditioning. Absolutely. Yeah. So you wanted to start your own company. What did you feel like was missing in the industry to make you want to go out on your own? Because it's a big deal to run your own business. Um, it is. Um, I think what was missing the most, what I mm -hmm. found is the customer themselves like having mm -hmm. the information and and being more engaged, uh, um, a lot of, I don't want to badmouth any companies, but most companies just give an invoice and mm -hmm. say, you know, pay this. They don't educate their customer or or give them knowledge on what they're even buying. So after the people left, they have no idea mm -hmm. what they just spent their money on. So, I mean, for me, I try to educate um, and give a complete rundown on on what's going on with their system mm -hmm. and why they need it and what's, what's important about it and um, what they may can do to maybe make it last longer. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, that speaks to my heartstrings because for those of you in the audience who don't know this, I used to be a teacher prior to real estate. And so I think front-loading information and making people feel empowered throughout the process is really important. And I think they also value the service that you're giving when they see that extra effort on your part to really make sure that they know what's going on. Because there's a lot of different moving parts in the world of real estate. And then when you start pulling in your specialists like yourself and getting in those experts to help them during what we're going to talk about here in a second, the due diligence period, it's really important that you're getting all that information in the backstory. So you can oh, make an informed decision. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very, very so let's back up a second because I definitely want to talk about due diligence because okay. I know Travis has helped me out numerous times here with that. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about maintenance. So uh -huh. you own a home, you've got an HVAC unit. How often do I need to look at it? Do I need to order something? Have somebody come out? Like, what do I need to do to maintain that? Well, um, I would say here, since we have both, you know, all the seasons, mm -hmm. I, at least twice a year, you'd want to get it looked over for winter, with a winter maintenance mm -hmm. and get it cleaning, um, your burners, uh, flame sensor, things like that. And then in the summertime, it's real important, um, probably the most important, and to have it cleaned, uh, the coils, indoor and outdoor coils, have the drains flushed, just to keep the system going um, as long as possible, you know, so, yeah. um, so at least twice a year. Well, and Travis is mentioning something that's really important, guys. So we do have four very distinct seasons. I think weather is probably a big facet of why people move here in the first place because of that. Um, so when you do your inspections, once you've gone under contract, something that I think always kind of throws people off is the fact that you have heating and you have AC, right? And you can't run both of those if there's the extreme variation of weather. So why can't you run your heating system to test it when it's 102 degrees outside or your AC when it's 12 degrees outside? Well, with the AC being anything below 65 degrees, mm -hmm. really is hard to get a, a good um, feel for the, the condenser on the outdoor, the compressor, the pressures. Mm -hmm. It has to be over 65. I mean, you definitely not anything under like 40 45 so winter seasons would not be a good time mm -hmm. um and what i've found sometimes you know you might go and have someone check the, the ac and then they they check like a delta t in the winter and it's like a 14 or 15 degrees but that's because the outdoor condenser is pulling in cold air mm -hmm. so it throws it off and makes people think maybe they have um 
a system that's better than than it actually is. So You're getting false readings, basically getting okay. false readings. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's very important, you know, to, to have it done at the the right time, appropriate time of yeah. year. So something to be mindful of, guys. Depending on what time of year you're making that home purchase, sometimes you need to be careful of what can be tested and not. So let's say we go under contract, right? We're in our due diligence period, and lo and behold, the inspector says, hmm, you need to get an HVAC specialist out there. So what is your role in that process and coming out to give more info to the buyer? How do you assist in that? Um, so I, with the realtor inspection, you know, I, I take a look at both the heat and the cool. I know there's different with the seasons we just mm -hmm. touched on where it's a little different, um, but I can actually, you know, get through it with a fine tooth, you know, check the um, different parts. Um, as far as what do I, what I do to make it different is I have a system that's set up where it'll actually, um, uh, it's like a, it's called measure quick. It's a scientific software mm -hmm. and it'll, uh, it's got, um, Bluetooth probes and all kinds of different little neat things. You know, that's where the world's going technology yeah. and things. So, um, and then you run the system and it'll basically check over everything and give the system a grade. So, um, that's where I kind of um, come in and it and it helps out a lot as far as reading it. Um, yeah, and if you guys haven't ever seen one of these reports, they're really cool. So again, kind of going back to my teacher roots, it literally gives you a score, a grade, if you will. So it's real easy for the client to understand. Did it pass? Did it fail? Or is it somewhere in between? Um, so this is also really helpful because as we know, during due diligence, that's the time to renegotiate a contract. And if I'm on the listing side, we're not going to give away anything unless it's warranted. So it's really important that you have trusted vendors who you know, like, and trust, right? That can actually explain it not only to the buyer who's making that request, but also to the seller because they're not going to give away any money or do any repairs if it's not warranted. So let's talk about the age of systems because I know that Travis and I have talked a lot about this where clients have seen that the home was built in 2008. It has an original HVAC system. And so now in 2023, it's probably time for that system to either be replaced or to have it at least main, um, maintenance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have this uh, misconception, right? Where 2008 system versus a 2016 system, people automatically think that the newer one is gonna be better. But what happened between the two that we need to talk about that people need to be aware of? Well, what I'll say is um, over time, basically between that gap, mm -hmm. 2008 and 2016, um, the, the energy gurus out there, you know, mm -hmm. they've increased uh, the efficient, efficiency. They, they went for higher efficiency on each year. Um, mm -hmm. I think just this year we actually did a change and it's now a new 15 seer when last year it was 14. So mm -hmm. as they do more efficient units, um, they're basically, um, I can't even think of the word I'm looking for, but their longevity, they're sacrificing uh -huh. longevity for the efficiency. So mm -hmm. they would rather you have something more efficient. They don't care how long it lasts. Um, and the reason that is, is you got more moving parts in the higher mm -hmm. efficiency unit. So, um, you know, whereas before you had just like a piston, which is just the refrigerant going through uh -huh. this little, you know, I don't know if people know what pistons is, but it's just a different way. And then, then later they came with a thermal expansion valve and then an electronic mm -hmm. expansion valve. So over time, the units got a little more complicated and with that became more expensive repairs. So, mm -hmm. you know, with the expensive repairs, you're not going to want to put two, $3,000 into a system. So, I mean, it makes it a little different, you know, from a 2008 system or 2016 system. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I've seen systems six years old that are that are bad. I mean, and I've seen 2008 systems that have been well maintained and they're in mm -hmm. good shape. Um, and that's because they don't have so many of the moving parts in it. Um, so basically, I mean, that's that's where we are with that. Um, there was another thing I wanted to touch on that, but. So really here, let me say that. this and maybe I'll jog your memory. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about the fact that the systems have gotten more complicated, yeah. meaning there's more parts that can break. And when that happens, more money out of pocket mm -hmm. in order to repair where you, then you're playing the game of, do we buy a new system mm -hmm. or do we pay the repairs? Also, from what I'm hearing you say, maintenance is really kind of the correlating factor here to yes. create that longevity. Mm -hmm. So if a homeowner, if it's been one owner and they've done a really good job in maintaining that unit, more than likely, it's probably in good condition. Yes. Okay. So good to note. So let's talk about brand new construction then. Okay. Because yeah. I know that those units sometimes yeah, are yeah. builder grade, which mm -hmm. we see 
builder grade in a lot of different things. Think flooring, lighting fixtures, um, or even like carpet pads. A lot of those things, when we're talking builder grade, we're talking about not necessarily the highest quality because it's going to cost a lot more money, which inevitably you're going to have to pay in your purchase price. So let's talk about HVAC that, units. Yeah. That actually jogged my memory. because mm -hmm. So let's say the 2016 unit, it's newer, but it's a new house yeah. back then in 2016. Well, they did put the lower end quality in it, mm -hmm. and um, those coils leak. Um, they're not; they're, they just don't last as long because, like you said, you know they sacrificed where they could. They might have had you a nice kitchen, but then mm -hmm. they um, had you a cheap outdoor um, AC condenser. So um, you're 100% correct on that, basically, and yeah. and that's what what I was trying to get to, and I forgot. But yeah, you actually now, did. See, this is just yeah. coming full circle yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, did, well, yeah. and often those units come with like everything when you buy a new house has mm -hmm. some kind of warranty, yeah. right? But I've noticed with those warranties, sometimes people's responsibility kind of comes off the table mm -hmm. in the maintenance. So do you still recommend getting the maintenance during that warranty period? I would 100%. I mean, in all honesty, if you read the warranty paperwork, which nobody ever does, <laughs> it'll tell them on there to, to actually, the warranty to be valid, they need to have actual maintenance uh -huh. done on their system. Um, Sometimes it gets overlooked. Some companies can be sticklers on it, depending mm -hmm. if you purchase from them or whatever. But, yeah. but um, actually, the yeah, the paperwork with the system says you know without a warranty, you know it'll void. Mm -hmm. Without a maintenance, it'll void the warranty. So yeah, it's a big deal to have a maintenance even, even in that five five year period yeah. um, if you buy a new home. So yeah. So break it down for folks. When we look at an MLS hot sheet, which mm -hmm. is kind of like just an overview of the property, a lot of times it'll talk about dual zones or it'll talk about multi-systems. So mm -hmm. can you explain what the purpose of that is or what the benefit is of having either the dual zones or having two separate systems, mm -hmm. especially if you have a two-story or even a three-story house? Well, yeah. Um, so you have the dual zone, which is one system, mm -hmm. and you have you know numerous thermostats with controlled dampers. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, what that another thing they did with that is to sacrifice a little bit of the cost, so they could only buy one system. They would buy a larger system um, and put the dampers in there, and that way you would still get the comfort on each level, mm -hmm. um, but you would only have the one system. And it, and it is a little efficient as far as um, having, but back in the day, they would have one system on two floors and that would mm -hmm. not be efficient. So yeah. when the zones came out, it kind of helped with efficiency and then a lot of builders took advantage of it mm -hmm. and started putting one system, you know, numerous zones. So it can be a good thing and it can be, you know, a bad thing just depending on the, the type of house. Yeah, yeah, the square footage. So, okay. yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about how to protect your unit from outside elements, mm -hmm. all right? So, landscaping. Mm -hmm. Should we have landscaping anywhere near our HVAC? I mean, I would, rocks maybe, you know, <laughs> I, I, like mulch, pine straw, things like that kick up a lot, especially mm -hmm. mulch, kick up a bunch of um, mulch dust mm -hmm. and you'll go to the unit to do maintenance and, you know, half of the unit is full of just black or brown or, or I've even seen red, you know, from whatever uh -huh. color mulch they have. And it's when it rains, you know, it, it's, and then the AC's on, it sucks it in. Mm -hmm. And then it's just uh, that coil, half of it's basically not drawing in the correct amount of, uh, of heat that needs to pull out of the air. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so. Well, and typically people are trying to hide the unit, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's in a backyard space and they're trying to make sure that like kids or whatever doesn't get into it. So would you recommend setting up more of like a fence system around it versus installing bushes? bushes. Yeah. Because I see that more often than not. Yeah, I hate that. Um, <laughs> there I you guess, go, guys. You've heard it straight yeah, from the man. Don't, don't put bushes don't, in near the air. Especially HVAC. a holly bush. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen them bushes, um, holly bushes, and um, even rose bushes, but uh -huh. and you have to get back there. But what happens is the bushes begin to grow, and then they start, um, and then around those bushes get weeds, and then the weeds tie in, and they, mm -hmm. they start wrapping in the coils. So I mean, I would say a fence is way better than um, than definitely a, a bush, yeah. especially a holly bush or. So if you want to take bush, off your you HAC specialist, yeah. install a holly yeah. bush. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> or we'll, I'll go cutting it down. I'm, I'm kidding. That's part, do of that. the, no. part of the cost there. Yeah. I'm your well, landscaper at that point, you know. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So two, uh, two for one there. That's right. Is there anything else that you feel like is really important for the public to know as far as running systems here or something that's unique to North Carolina, something to be aware of? Oh, well, you know, with North Carolina, we have a lot of humidity, mm -hmm. so I think that's a big deal. And 
with designing the HVAC system, you know, we're not necessarily trying to cool the house down as much as we are trying to pull the humidity out. Mm -hmm. So if you have a system that's designed correctly, you know, you don't have to have it set as low. You know, you might go into some people's house and you see it set on 68. Well, that's probably because their system isn't designed correctly mm -hmm. um, to pull out the humidity. So they're just keeping it running all the time to get that humidity and get that comfort yeah. level. Um, you can have a good setting at around 72 to 74 if you have a system set up correctly that's pulling out the correct humidity. Mm -hmm. So I think in our uh, climate zone, humidity is probably a big deal and you would want to make sure, you know, you have a specialist look over your system, make sure, you know, it's good for pulling out the humidity and the airflow is set up correctly because that's a big deal. Sometimes the airflow never gets set up on mm -hmm. some of these uh, new bills or or because who puts it in and then another guy comes and starts it up mm -hmm. and they just never set the the fan um, on the correct setting so then you have like a four ton blower with a three ton outdoor mm -hmm. coil when you got different speeds so you got too fast of air blowing across the coil so you're not getting the right amount of humidity drawn out of the house yeah. and i'm a little long-winded with that but it's very important you know you want to have mm -hmm. the humidity regulate to come out of the house the same time as cooling down you don't want your system to short cycle or blast cold air in and then it shuts your thermostat off mm -hmm. and then you're left with humidity then it comes on again and then it's just your constantly you know you would want that fan to kind of blow at a, cer a certain speed mm -hmm. um, so i think that's a big deal to actually have um, an hvac person come check your unit over just if it wouldn't be for anything but that i mean because the Absolutely. humidity we have you know and that'll run your electric bill up because it's constantly running that. you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so this is probably your busy time of year right yes i would say busy. things are probably popping off just like in real yeah. estate guys this is our busy time of year when the humidity starts that's when we see things go awry because a lot of times the units they probably had no idea that something wasn't working right and we get mm -hmm. that first hot day and next thing you know your phone's blowing up. Yeah, they want to wait till the last minute, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be 80 degrees and they didn't turn it on, and then when it turns 85, they turn it on and think someone needs to be there right away. Mm -hmm. well, it takes a little bit of time to get through the other calls that you get first, you know. But, um, yes, it's very busy, um, and it, and then there's just not a lot of heat in it. I mean, you look at the, the field and you're like, wow, there's a lot of heat in air companies. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a lot of people come into the area and, and there's really not because, mm -hmm. you know, in the summertime, you can have people waiting for four or five days, even a week to, before someone can come look at their system, which is another reason why maintenance is important. So they can mm -hmm. catch those things like you're a little low on refrigerant, you know, they come out in the springtime, let's say like now or last month and, and we can check it out and say, you know, you're low on refrigerant, you're mm -hmm. instead of just waiting and calling when it gets hot and then you're waiting four days and you're miserable and then you're mad at the HVAC guy, but it's not our fault. Yeah, <laughs> you know absolutely. I mean? but, well, yeah. so guys, if you are looking for somebody that is just trustworthy, that's gonna walk you through the process and really educate you on your system and how to best maintain it, Travis is your guy. So if you're looking to reach out to him to start that maintenance setup, or you think that maybe yours is on its last leg and it's time for replacement, his information will be below this episode in the information and description section. Um, I am Laura Richardson with Relevate. Be sure to like, share, and follow if you feel like this information could be helpful to somebody you know. Thank you. All right, y'all, thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like, share, and follow us on Instagram as well as YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts. Again, I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate.